This inspired me. And sometimes you gotta steal like an artist. Hey, it's care. Welcome to My Take at the Lake. Stick with me because I'm not just rehashing what's been done. I'm gonna show you my take on it and here in just a little bit. I was watching A Call to Create, Sue at A Call to Create, and doing her autumn flip through. I will link that video below. I love her work, we know this. As she, as she was flipping through, one thing that caught my eye that I paused it on and I totally loved it is this. And I asked her about it and she said, oh, I was watching My Vagabond Style, binge watching My Vagabond Style. She does magazine fodder like this. And, and that was her take on it. And so I went and I watched My Vagabond Style, one of her videos. She has several. She has a whole playlist on how to do this. It's super easy. And I've seen these videos, they keep cropping up over and over and over in my feed. And it looks interesting and yeah, I wanna try it, but it's about 987 on the list, right? So I didn't do it until I saw Sue's. And I loved, what I loved about hers is the color in the background. I love how it's set up. I, I just love everything about the way Sue's turned out. And funny, there's this little one off to the left that I didn't even notice the first time. <laughs> or the second time that I watched it, or even the third time when I went back to get the picture. I'm not sure, but I think that is taken out of a different magazine, and we'll talk more about that in, in a minute. But here's, here's where I started, where everybody else started. This was not my first inclination, though. You know, you gotta know by now, my first inclination was this. If they can do flowers, I can do paw prints, right? So I'll show you more of these in a minute. And that's part of my take on this. I ended up doing my own, like Sue's. I loved the shape of it in the background. But I want to just quick show you this pile of yumminess. A couple of extra big pieces here. I gathered some things for Piles to Poems, and I'm nicknaming it. Maybe we can change the name, Amy? Question mark to Franken phrases, <laughs> since not everybody likes poetry. I, I just didn't think that through, but. Piles to Poems slash Franken Freezes. I found some fun additions to that project. I found some things for other themes that I'm collecting. My Colors Glue Book, a project I'm working on for my cousin. My dog books. So there's several images here that I collected. I also got some things for my daily glue booking. So I got a truckload out of just one magazine. This is also a great way to use the magazines that you've already harvested for things for your glue books and junk journals. If you've already harvested your magazines and they're in the glue book pile, go through them again and make some beautiful art. Anyway, the reason I'm bringing you this video, and I'm not going to show you how to do this because there are literally hundreds of videos out there. Well, maybe not hundreds. As far back as two years, I could find there's video after video after video. I'm just going to string a few here so you can go find them. You go look them up and, you know, whichever ones strike your fancy. Uh, you could also do this not just with magazine pages, but with watercolor. Just throw some beautiful watercolors down on some crappy watercolor paper and doodle on top of that. There are several videos in this list that do that as well. It's the same exact principle. And you can also do the same thing with book pages. Just plain like this, or before you do your doodle, throw some watercolor or some brushos or any kind of way to get color on that page. Jelly plate prints would work beautifully for this too. And I know a lot of us have truckloads of gel plate prints that we're not sure what to do with. They would work every bit as good as magazine. Plus they'd be yours from top to bottom, inside and out, 100% yours. So this is what everybody is doing. And I, of course I did that because because it's fun. So here's my take on it. Here's what bothers me. And you know, there's got to be a Krabby Crafter rant once in a while. Every video does the same exact thing. Mushrooms, flowers, mushrooms, flowers, leaves, leaves, mushrooms, flowers, leaves, mushrooms, flowers, leaves, leaves, mushrooms, flowers. Right? Why there's 700 videos on how to do this and not just one that everyone gives credit to? 
tutorials. I get everyone saying, look what I did. Look how cool these turned out. These are awesome. They're addictive. This is so fun. You can do it too. And then pointing them to the video that's tutorial. That's a tutorial on it. Here's my input. Instead of just doing what everybody else is doing, pick your own thing and do that. You know, my thing is dogs and paw prints and anything that has to do with dog. I'm going to find a little dog outline and do He's kind of dark, but you can, there you can see. And do, some of these aren't done. I may go back in. They all need to be fussy cut out. Like this one is, this one's done. All right, I've done all the doodling I'm going to do, and I have fully fussy cut it. These are just rough cuts here. They need to be cut out or trimmed up. Like this one would be cool. Just square, just clean, neat, square. And I got truckloads of them and I doodle differently on them all different all different and I didn't just draw these I, I got these stickers from Tamu a while back and I grabbed three different shapes and sizes and I flipped them over and I used those as templates but it's not terribly difficult you know it's kind of a half of a heart and half of a flower put together all of them half of a heart half of a flower they're just different sizes and then kind of gauged my paw sizes, my imprint sizes by what was here. I didn't always get it, right? They're not, not a one of them is, is the same. <laughs> they're all different. And that's the beauty of it. I like this. And I, they're just so much fun. All the color in the backgrounds. You know, how fun is that? I believe that's a lady's dress in the background. Bigger, smaller, different sizes. I don't know if I had those out or not. But look how cute they are. So cute. I love, love, love them. Okay, so the other thing I did a little differently because why keep doing the same thing that everybody else is doing? The first page I came to was this neon green, an ad with neon green in the back. And that is very Halloween-ish to me. And so I made some faux washi Halloween tape. Uh, what, I'm, what am I using here? I wanted to use my Poscas, but I, they're not where they usually live. They're not where I'm, all my new pens are, so I don't know where they are, but what I was using on these are my Artex acrylic markers, different colors, a white Signo Unibel Signo gel pen, a white Posca, Two sizes of Sharpie. The Tombow pens didn't work at all, FYI. And a few of my Papermate Ink Joy ink pens. So I'm in the Halloween mood, right? It's coming up. It is tis the season. So here we here we are. So I made faux washi tape, made a few pumpkins, packaged food, packaged zucchini, green ad, packaged carrots. Orange ad, burnt orange ad, golden ad, more packaged food. Super easy, and aren't they cute? I just love them. You know what? I, I may doodle on them more, put more white highlights on, jazz him up just a little bit, make make the inside of his mouth a little bit lighter so you can see, make it more dimensional. Maybe color in down here where it's not orange anymore. I don't know. So that some are done, some are not. I think this one's pretty ready to go. We could put a little saying on there. Hey there, pumpkin, or pumpkin spice, or just leave it as it is. I made a collection of ghosts. If it was a, just a white page, I made a little ghost. If it was gray or black, I made a little ghost. This one even has some blue on it. They're so simple. You just draw, you know, a ghosty shape and put in, these are armholes, and of course, eye, nose, and mouth holes so they can talk. Some are smiling, some are scary, some are surprised. They're all so simple. I may embellish them. Obviously, they all need to be cut. And I will, um, down here at the bottom, make it real ripply so it looks like sheets and maybe put in some pleats with my marker. I'm not sure. Some more Halloween goodies. This was not on purpose. This was left over on the back of something else that I cut out, this eye. And I just thought, well, that'll be fun, one eye. So I colored her white, the white of her eye yellow, and I gave her lots of red stuff. 
and blood tears and a little bit of purple makeup and a TikTok eyebrow and spider webby lashes and green green and red in her eye the, the color of her eye just to creep it up a little bit some severed fingers these are from that's a nail polish ad more severed fingers obviously I did the the blood with one of the Artex markers there was another eye and so I just jazzed that up too creepified it there was an ad this is a shoe I think a Katy Perry shoe with lips on it for God's sake I'm gonna cut those blood droplets out this is an ad for some city workout place I just blocked that out and kept skulls and, and crossbones this girl was at the bottom I, I used the top of that ad for a paw print because I love the colors I think it's this one here it's a home tanning bed float studio thing or something I don't know but I used it for the paw print and she was left over and she looked to me like she was laying in a coffin so I found a dark black brown ad and I made a coffin for her I'm gonna jazz that up a little bit with some marker details so you can tell what it is but she's now laying in a coffin for my Halloween journal I made some Halloween dark forest mushrooms they almost look like they would glow in the dark they don't but they're super cool for a dark Halloween page I love how they turned out they need to be fussy cut out it's all our text markers purple black green and red or orange I, I absolutely love how this little Halloween collection came out and this was a one magazine it, it was a one shape magazine from July August 2018 so it's not a Halloween magazine at all oh I got a Halloween themed paw print to put in my Halloween book too speaking of Halloween just a quick sidebar I recently posted because you know I'm always late to the party and if you're late all the time too or running behind we're we're at our first week of October is almost over and and you haven't yet done your Halloween journal on my Patreon page right now for the $5 tier is a mini kit, mini journal kit. I'll just quick show you a glimpse of it. This is a, it's two-sided, and I'm going to do a video on this ASAP, so I'm not going to spill all the beans. But it's two-sided. One side is fall, fun, cozy, warm, daylight colors. The other side of the journal is Halloween, dark, spooky, ooh colors and they're tiny it's half it's half the size of an, a normal one so it'd be I don't know four and a quarter by five and a half yeah four and a quarter by five and a half I think it's very small and it's tear and go like I like you print it borderless tear it in half and I'll show you all of this there's also an ink saver version available so you can use them as background pages rather than if you want to just use as they are and put a few sentiments on it you know if you don't have a whole lot of time use the bright colored one and I'll do a full flip through of the kit and show you the journal that I'm making or have made by then to get you started but I wanted to let you know I have another easy fast Halloween kit on my Etsy shop it is print fold and go print double-sided there's also backing pages included with the Etsy kit print double-sided full-size borderless fold it and put it together you don't even have to sew it you can just tie it in it's super super easy so if you feel like you're running late to the Halloween party go grab up that kit I'll put a link to that kit in the description below and keep an eye out for the the upcoming video on the mini kit this is how big it turns out and so it's not overwhelming you can do this yet yeah, this month and get, you know get caught up with the Halloween challenges and I'll tell you who inspired this in the next video so you can go check that out too back to our regularly scheduled program so this was a July August magazine it was not a Halloween magazine but I found plenty of Halloween -y stuff to do the last thing that I did differently than everybody else is what I see Janet Nash doing all the time 
is cutting out wonky hearts. I haven't fussy cut them yet. I haven't doodled them up yet. But the ad had just enough for me to cut out four hearts for my Boston. So I'll probably put their names on it and their colors and put these in my Boston book. Another thing that I did that I haven't seen anyone else do is just use what's there. This is an olive oil mayonnaise ad. Instead of drawing leaves, I let them draw the leaves. I just doodled outside them. And I have a whole video on this that I recorded for you a while back. I think I'm gonna re-record it and bring it to you because it's super fun. And it goes along this same line. It's feeling artsy without actually being artsy. It's doing artsy things and having artsy, fartsy results without too much effort. More on that coming soon. There were a couple of these that I just doodled what was already there. So out of one shape summer magazine, I got all of this words for Franken phrases, I'm going to call it that, stuff for other journals and projects. And a whole bunch of stuff for my Halloween stuff. Loads of paw prints that I am I cannot wait. So what I'm going to do, when my parents are coming over for dinner tonight, we're probably going to sit and watch a movie. I'm going to fussy cut these while I sit and watch a movie. So thank you, Sue, for the inspiration, the boot in the butt to try this. It is absolutely addictive. I wasn't feeling too hot yesterday, so I sat right here and I did one whole magazine. I just grabbed one at random and decided to find what I could find and I found the mother load I think I just love all these things and I, I especially love the one that I completely copied when I found a page that had similar colors to Sue's that's that's when I did hers and I just looked at her picture on the screen and I copied it but that was about the last thing I did to be honest I I, uh, I don't like to do what everybody else is doing but I absolutely loved everything about this so I'll probably do this particular one again especially when I find more magazines that have that cool background and correct me if I'm wrong Sue um, I think that hers came from something like a, a Somerset studio magazine because because if you look real closely at her picture the background is paint spatter and it's it's grungy and whatnot and I think that that would be from a magazine like this. You know, some of this stuff's already here. Redoodle over that flower and cut that out. Um, there's another flower there complete with words. But hers has a really interesting background and that makes a difference, I think, to the end result of this. So pay attention to your background. I also uh, tried to avoid the words. When I fussy cut that, that little bit of hair in that paw print will be gone. Um, I tried to just do where there wasn't any words, and so that helps. But in some cases, I love the words. These black and white ones that are just plain are from those horrible warning signs on the advertisements for medicine. They never looked better. But this kind of page would lend itself beautifully to this kind of work. But again, so would your watercolor. So would your gel plate. So would any magazine you have next to to you in your stash. All of those things will work, as will watercolor, as will, I just recently did a flip through of my composition books of unwasted paint. This would be perfect for that, those papers too. So whatever you have, you can do this. You can absolutely do this. And I didn't come up with all those out of my head either. I went through and I looked at a lot of the other videos and I just drew out what I wanted to remember. Funny leaves, mushrooms, sideways flowers, whatever these are, flowers with bigger petals, flowers with square petals, berry type things, fern type things, so that I didn't, because I kept doing this in paw prints, this in paw prints, this in paw prints, this in paw prints, and I, I didn't want to do that. So then I went to the videos and I looked at other videos, just the thumbnails really to get some other ideas for shapes and sizes and whatnot. So I hope this inspires you. Please go try it. It's, a, it's an absolute fail-safe, foolproof project. You cannot do this wrong, and you'll be thrilled with the results. I'll be back soon with a Halloween video and another artsy-fartsy without being artsy-fartsy video soon. Between now and then, please go give your Beastlies extra, extra, extra love and treats today. Every day is dog love day. My take at the lake. Out for now.